Hello, and welcome to Getting to Know You. I'm your host, Robert Jakeway. On today's program, we're going to be talking with Patricia Trudy Cuhill, who is Professor of Art History in the Creative Arts Department at Siena College. We're going to be talking to her about the Creative Arts Department as well as the curriculum. So let's go meet her. Pat, thank you very much for agreeing to be a guest on the show today. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Now, I always ask my guests, first off, uh, to give a little bit of their background so that the audience can uh, know you a little bit better. So I'm going to ask you, um, you know, where you came from and how you got here. Do you want the long or the short? <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that long up to you. Long <laughs> time. Um, I uh, came to teach at Siena College in the year 2000. My husband had accepted the deanship of the uh, science college at Siena, and so I followed him. Um, so I've been here and happy here for eight years. Uh, before this, I taught at Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I uh, got my uh, master's and doctorate at Penn State, my undergraduate degree at the University of Toronto, where I met my husband. Okay. We had three children together, and uh, I actually didn't go back to, my, uh, to work on my PhD till I was 40. So I'm one of those late bloomers because I raised my children and then uh, did my art history. My specialty is Leonardo da Vinci studies. And I wrote a book uh, on Leonardo's drawings in, in America. Uh, it's published in facsimile and out of print now. Okay. Um, and it was a big facsimile edition used in many exhibitions. So I did that. I've worked in Leonardo studies, and now I'm working on uh, the aesthetics, the problems of aesthetics in art. So I've had a long, happy career. You know, in listening to you talk, and it really sounds like one, um, it looks like we have the makings for another program. Because, <laughs> uh, boy, what you've just said has really intrigued me. So, you know, count on the fact that I'll be talking to you again, okay? I have so many slides. <laughs> I, I could fill your programming <laughs> for months. We could do multiple parts, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but today we're going to talk about the um, creative arts uh, department at Siena College, um, and uh, and what it is, what is the creative arts department, and what's the, what you know what what does it consist of, and then we're going to start talking about components of it at all. So I'm going to ask you the the overall general question is, you know, what's a creative art department? <laughs> Our creative arts department at Siena College is comprised of areas that are often departments in another place, but we're a small group, so we bonded together under the aegis of the idea of creativity that we could bring this to the liberal arts college. We could stress uh, teaching how to be creative, show how people have been creative, and uh, the, our professors themselves are extremely creative people. So we bring all that together and uh, provide a, a good grounding for students uh, in creativity in various ways. So we have uh, theater, we have uh, music, we have art, and art history is a part of the visual arts program. Um, we're a small but very strong and very th enthusiastic faculty. And our department has been growing uh, slowly, but strongly, uh, over the last few years since we've been instituted. Now, you're consolidated at the at uh, at the college. I know that I know that the Foy Theater is in one particular building. Are you all together? Or We're not? all together now. We have been for the last six years in the Foy building. Okay. And in fact, right now we're using the lobby of Foy uh, for a gallery space. And in that, one of my uh, students, senior Maria Sagala, has just done an exhibition, is, it's just opening today, of uh, Robert Rauschenberg's prints, which really? Sienna has wow. at, uh, Sienna has thanks to uh, the fact that we got the full family collection, that is the Fine Arts Museum of Long Island, we got their whole art collection when they uh, went defunct. and. As a result, we have an extraordinary number of wonderful uh, works of art, and we can show them only a little bit at a time because right now, because we don't have a creative arts building yet, okay. uh, we don't have a proper gallery. But you can come and see our 
big, beautiful five Robert Rauschenberg prints up in the lobby of Foy, which we have tried to turn into a kind of gallery space. Now talk about timing, uh, and I'm sure this, I know. Was, this, was, I, in, was, this just, was much in the works before, you know, the fact that he just died, what, last right, week? Or yes, just of the a week? few days ago. Right. right. And in fact, a part of the exhibition is a little sort of altar memorial to Robert Rauschenberg. How neat. How so neat. yeah, we, the, his... Uh, his obituary was the front page of the New York Times, yes, so we had that framed up, and um, flowers put Wonderful. beneath it. So Maria is going to be giving a talk about Robert Rauschenberg and the prints in the gallery. And as you say, tonight. this can really go on for quite a while. You can you can really start because you have so much. We have so much. Uh, we just did the first sculpture exhibition at Siena. Um, in that lobby in March, and it ran from throughout March and some of April, and we still have some pieces left. The, the uh, reason the family collection was given to us is to enrich the college, and so we have tried by exhibiting works to show people what we have so that they can sort of adopt them and take them into their spaces. So um, Siena really does have a number of very fine artworks throughout their uh, buildings. How wonderful. And we're, in, we're expanding that as we go. Yeah, I, I had the occasion to talk with the, uh, the director of the art gallery over at, at Albany. And, and also there, there's, there are so many works of art that they were able to have them in various spots through the, uh, the uh, community. And uh, I just think that's terrific. Um, you're not confined to you know particular space, and it does enrich the whole whole environment. So how wonderful! It's really wonderful. Yes. How wonderful. Well, let's let's talk about now. In the creative part, arts department, you have all these. Uh, shall I call them di di disciplines or? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and and you can and a student could uh, in the liberal arts college could 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 choose to take. Uh, courses in a particular area of interest like theater or music or art history. Uh, but you also have a curriculum for a, um, a degree, am I right? That's right. You can major in creative arts, but our creative arts program is extremely flexible and we uh, design the student's program for that student's interest. So if someone is interested, for example, in uh, theater, but in music in the theater. They can concentrate on that. They can, they can work in theater, work in music, and we will work them out a degree that will be appropriate to their interests. How wonderful. One of our business students uh, at Siena took every creative arts course he could get because he was going to go into the music industry and he wanted to know what was the mind of an artist like so that when he actually did his work he could do it in the fullest kind of way. That's the sort of degree we offer. That's the kind of program, kind of training we offer. Now, as a result, this has been in existence for how long now? Uh, about eight years. Okay. Now, are you attracting students specifically for this uh, curriculum, we, or are, you, are they sort of being developed as, as they find out about it? Most of our students have now come from within the Siena community, but as our reputation grows, as it will, because we're producing very good, well-trained students, uh, we will get more people who come to us, our program, just because of the program. Okay. Now, with somebody who, let's say, somebody who concentrates in the theater, uh, and I see part of the theater um, um, a discipline, you could possibly get into theater management. That's right. Um, is, this, is this a degree that's sufficient for them to actually go into the um, the world and, and, and be employed, or does this, is this a stepping stone to, to some further education? Well, of course, our, our training is a good stepping stone for other, other education, but certainly if you took, for example, uh, our, our track, we, have, we organize our uh, fields of study within the department in tracks, so if you took our arts management curriculum, okay. you would be doing... Uh, a minor or a major in business, as well as our uh, various courses in okay. creative arts. And so, yes, you would be very well able to get out okay. into the business world. That one of the things we're trying to do is make a place for creative people 
to be able to get jobs when they get out. Well, I would say so. I mean, that's the, you know, yes, it's wonderful is, to have a liberal arts degree, but what are you doing right, here, right? That's right, that's right. But we really want to place our students in some sort of working environment, and that's why we, we offer this very flexible program so that they can be uh, trained for a specific need, for a specific goal. Of course, if a student has more general interests, we can do that too. Um, but one of the things we want to do is make sure that the student is well trained to, to get a job when they get out. I know that's a particular problem when people study in fields like theater, right. or the creative arts, art. Right. Their parents wonder that whether they're going to be able to support themselves in a way other than being waiters. Have, have fun, but what are you gonna, how, are you gonna do, how are you going to make a living, right? Right. And that's uh, why we now have a broadcast component to our uh, program. There's television uh, studies in our, in our program, and the students are going to be able to work all these things together in order to have some sort of believable job when they get out. Now, I imagine you mentioned a smaller faculty, and so that would be, uh, you know, a, a, a nice concentration for, and is it, I'm not sure what the enrollment is at the college. I talked to Father Kevin a while back, but I don't remember the enrollment, but. The enrollment is about 3,000. Okay, so, but do you have as a result in this department um, um, the ability for students to really become, um, have it be personalized so that they can work directly with a faculty member, that there's not this huge um, uh, lecture hall with X number of people in it and they're just like a little dot in there, or <laughs> is it something that really is hands-on and, and kind of... Siena classes generally are rather small, they're okay. only 35. Um, our freshman level courses are often about 35 students, but for example, our introductory level course for creative arts majors is taught by Denise Massman, and that course will have less than 15 students in it. The purpose of that course is to have the students realize that they're in a place where creativity is the focus, and the course is to have them learn where their strengths in the creative arts are. So it's an overview, have, kind of an overview course? Yeah, or really, it it's a, not an overview. Okay. It's a looking at the student, a working with the student okay. to find out exactly what's good for that student. Okay. It's, a lot, it's, it's a class of, say, 12 with a lot of individual attention right. to the students. And they talk to one another and they work with one another. And when you go to their presentations at the end of the term, they're all excited about what the other person is doing and they help one another through these projects encouraging the strengths oh, wonderful. pulling up the shy person helping that person come out of themselves uh, pointing out you know you don't want to do that you know so it, it's a really good course and it sets the students up for the rest of the program because they learn about themselves and their own talents and they learn how they might exploit those talents. So in a way, Denise Maskman can actually advise these students through and help them grow. And we know about them because she has done such careful work mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. in that first, first course they have. And then, of course, they go on to the regular courses. But they end their program by doing a capstone course in which their single works are um, their their achievements are made into a single work or a single presentation, whatever whatever is their particular field, okay. right? So, for example, this year we had a student who has spent all her uh, vacation times in internships at Disney World, and so her project for her capstone course was to make a huge puppet, like a street puppet costume. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the picture you'll see, you'll see her puppet uh, still. I wish we had an animated shot. But she made this terrific puppet. Uh, a, a, it's a kind of a winged doll faced thing. <laughs> and uh, it was so successful that she's going to be in graduation in that puppet. So oh. you'll see it. They're, they're going to use her as a part of the graduation ceremony. So <laughs> it's really, really good. In fact, uh, there's a really cool sign when, when two of us, you asked about the person, uh, how much personal attention they get. Right. Well, 
uh, there's a day in which they present all their final projects. It's sort of the creative arts day. And when uh, two of our faculty members, Mahmoud Karimi Hakak and Greg Zoltovsky, saw Kira Poji's puppet, they made a big sign. And, and on it, was, it said, this is a creative arts final. <laughs> and they took her around campus. <laughs> Those two professors walked her around campus and showed her off. That's the kind of attention we uh, wonderful. give to, for our students. Yeah, they're, they're, they're lucky um, to study. I should say us. so. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see the picture. When, when uh, some, let's say someone chooses to go into broadcasting, uh, into television, um, and you talked about this young lady doing interns. Was that a part of the part of the curriculum? Was that something she did in, independently? She did it independently, but of course we do have internships. Okay, so I was going to say, if someone went into broadcasting, would there be an internship? That there they will would... be internships for that. Yes, in fact, we have a lot of students working on our own Siena broadcast system. This is just being established, and we'll have our first full professor in um, broadcast uh, join us next year. Yes, and you kind of gave me a little clue before while we were talking. You're getting somebody that's coming from Syracuse, am I right? He's coming from the University of Syracuse, and he decided to finish up his career helping Sienna start the broadcast system. I think broadcast. that's terrific. It's, it's just so terrific. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. Now, do you actually have a studio? Um, I know we have a very have modest a, studio here, but yes, you have a Yes, we have a nice scene? broadcast studio. It's a little bigger than this with much more equipment, but uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. really nice, and uh, the students are just flock there. They love to work there. There you go. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the other, some of the other, other, other disciplines. Let's say art history. Um, that's your specialty. Um, how, what does one go into art history for? To to teach it? To uh, work in a museum? Um, Yes, you can do that. You can, <laughs> you can work in a gallery. You can. It's a wonderful background for a teacher of any kind. Um, I went into it just because I loved studying beautiful things mm. and wondering why they were beautiful and why I responded in such a way. And uh, I think that's really why a lot of people do do that because they just love to think about beautiful things and wondering, wonder how they, uh, how they become that way. Do you use a standard text? I mean, what was oh, it, yeah, I use this. I, I don't, use, I don't use Janssen, but I've used a number of texts. I use now uh, Laura Fierro because in that text, there, uh, she, she quotes literature. She cites literature of the day. And I like to have the students look at paintings or sculpture or architecture in terms of the literature of the day, uh, because I think it informs the images very well, and they understand a lot more about the images by reading the literature than by reading just somebody's commentary about that. I'll give them the commentary in the lecture, but I want them to be able to read, um, for example, what uh, Cyrus actually wrote about uh, his, his civilization when you look at Persian civilization. I want them to read Cyrus's edicts, Cyrus's monumental uh, okay. architectural So really, uh, really open it up and make it? Open it up and make it broader. Because I think when students learn from various directions, they see the art with their eyes, and then they read really artful text, because we're very careful about what text we bring together with the works of art. It reinforces the meaning of those works. And one thing we want to have people understand is how beautiful is our heritage, how many wondrous things we have in our patrimony, and uh, to reverence those, those things that have come down to us, the labor that has gone into those things. You know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking as you're talking, and, and you know, I, 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 when you go to really a really fine museum, uh, uh, the National Gallery in, in, in Washington or in, in Wonderful. London. Wonderful. And you have, you, you can get these audio guides and, and you're, you're led to stand in front of a work of art that maybe you've seen, uh, it's so familiar to you, and all of a sudden you're, the narrator is, is giving you all sorts of, of things to look at and see and explore. And it just, you, you can be just in awe of, of all of a sudden you're seeing things that you never saw or you might understand something. That's um, my goal. That's my goal. 
And then b b b what, what, what's a really curious thought I'm having is, is that why would somebody, uh, other than somebody who wants to appreciate art and, 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 and perhaps go into the field, what good does it do you to, to all of a sudden know all about this particular painting or that particular piece of sculpture? What does that do to your life? Well, it enhances your life, but it, it just makes you a richer person. Uh, richer person. But there is uh, a lot of uh, training that goes into observing a work of art carefully. Because when you look at a work of art, you're looking at the surface, you're looking at what is happening in the painting, right? But you're also looking, why is it happening in this way? Because someone made this happen. Um, and so what you get trained in is observational skills. Okay. So that it's so valuable that now at Yale Medical School, their medical students are required to take art history because it teaches them the language, body language, teaches them to observe how their patients act, not just what they say. Oh, great. And so that's a wonderful thing. Okay. So you can really observe life. And, you can really and be more life. attuned to what's going on and see things rather than just accept them as a, you know, something that you just walked by. That's right. And um, the, it's true that the more you know about things, the more there is to appreciate. And that's something that it's good to know about the world, that there is so much to appreciate, so much to treasure, and that we better take care of it. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, there's a theater um, component also to this. We spoke a little bit about this. We talked about the theater there. And I know that there was, has, been a, has been a rather exciting production or something recently. Oh, we had a wonderful production of the Persians, Aeschylus uh, play. It's the oldest surviving tragedy that we have. And uh, we had just a, such a wonderful production that it was put up for a going to the Kennedy mm -hmm. uh, competitions in Washington. Um, one of our reviewers said it was the best college production he had ever seen. That's a lot to say because our students are not, the actors are not necessarily uh, theater students or creative arts majors. Because you don't... We have biology majors, we have psychology majors, we have economics majors who are actually acting in our plays. Okay. And um, it's, it just talks to the amount of preparation that they had that they could have gotten such a review. In fact, I brought the, the uh, video of the play for you to okay, take maybe parts we can, of we can you like. hopefully get a snippet of that in yes, the in, can. and take a break on that. Yeah. And, um, Right now, we only have two people in the theater department. We're hiring next year. We hope someone specializing in acting, especially acting for the camera and voice and movement. Okay. But um, currently, our director producer is Mahmoud Karimi Hakak. Probably people in the area know him very well and know his work very well. Um, and we have a designer, Denise Massman who uh, we hired as a costume designer, but she also does uh, whole, th whole stage and everything. And in this production, we were really lucky to have Denise because she does puppets, too, and that's why Kira was able to make such a fantastic <laughs> ah, the puppet, puppet connection. <laughs> yes, the puppet connection was great. Kira was able to do that because one of Denise's fascinations is puppetry. So in the play, there were these great puppets. For example, there's a scene where Darius, the uh, Persian king, comes out of the grave. And what happens is right in the middle of the stage, it, it opens this way. And then there's this, there's this rustling and, of silk. And you see this white silk moving around. And you see it's a ghost. It's like a moth coming out of a cocoon. And he's talking. And he's waking up. And, and then all of a sudden, the puppet comes right up. And it's a tent, cocoon tent, in which Darius is then talking, asking, what, what's happened to his son? Why has his son gone off and done these terrible things, causing so many deaths? And uh, he meets his wife. And then when they have their tete-a-tete, -tete, they go into the cocoon. And it is, it is such a, an evocative 
experience. Now, may I ask, have you, have you captured, is that what you did in that video? Oh, you that, me? it's so, on the so video, So why yeah. don't we take a, um, a break uh, for a minute and, 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 oh, and, and that would be try good, to uh, good, take good. a look at that, okay? That would be good, yeah. Okay. Scratched open. Thunderbolts of plague? Civil war? Neither. Near Athens, the whole expedition was lost. Which of my sons invaded Greece? Okay, I, I, you know, the magic of the theater to me is just, and what you can do in a theater space, what you can do, uh, and, and really to just enchant people, to, to become, have people become involved, I, I, you know, there's nothing quite like it. Well, especially in this production, because what I just explained to you was, well, what you just saw was that puppet coming up from the middle of the stage, but you should realize that the stage is a circular stage, and you have to climb up the stairs to go into it, and you sit around the back of the circular okay. stage. So there's really only room for 50 to 100 people. The, the video you saw was the shooting we did before the audience okay. came. We did. Um, but then holding the circular stage in is a projection screen. So you have a circular projection screen. And projected on that screen were uh, scenes from films, scenes from news of uh, war. And the, the so you're doing sort of a multimedia war. kind it's of a event very, as well. It's a very multimedia production. Our uh, new professor of art, Amanda Ransom, organized the visual uh, images, my students in art history went through and got the images that would be put in the production. Great. So um, that was so interesting because the Aeschylus in the original play and, and Mahmoud trimmed that play down to an hour. <laughs> so in order to give a sense of Xerxes went off foolishly and had over 400,000 men killed uselessly in the war. 
in order to give that sense, we use contemporary battle scenes to make that more. It, uh, interesting, beautiful, and, and, and you know, what, the idea of approachability into the creative arts. Um, you know, with all the stuff we're having, uh, the, the, the images and the noise that we're getting. Uh, I just did a, a book talk yesterday about, you know, noise, uh, music and noise. And, you know, young people um, are, you know, listening to their iPods, they're looking on their phone, they're getting all this kind of thing. And, to, and, and they can't relate, I'm imagining. Maybe it's an overgeneralization, but they can't relate um, to something that is that is um, uh, traditional or historic, and, and and so by doing this, it sounds like you're giving them um, a, a context that right. they can attach to, and yet still have the essence of this classic piece. Absolutely, they have the essence of the classic piece because they can understand it in modern terms. They can understand okay. it because they're living it now. Okay. In fact, the book that is the actors have directions, have worksheets to, to fill out, have all sorts of essays to write in order so that their character will understand, you know, they, will, they will understand what the meaning of all of this is and how real it is. What I find is trouble, troublesome, uh, especially in art history, because the buildings are often so distant, is to give the student a sense that this is real, that they could actually stand there, they could actually be there, they could actually experience this. And um, that's what this play did. It put it in our world, or, or images from our world, and then the very uh, strong and striking uh, work with the puppets and costumes. How nice, how nice. And the fact that you were so close. Yep, yeah. And I hope, I hope it brought in audiences. You said it was a small audiences, but I hope that uh, over the nights that you did it, that yes, you would get a nice It brought in audiences, and mouth. I hope that when uh, it travels, it will have lots of, uh, lots great, of people great. to see it. Wonderful. It was a wonderful production. Now, what other, you know, I'm, 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 you know we're, getting, we're getting a little close to the end of the, to the, to the conversation, and I could feel like I could keep talking all afternoon. <laughs> um, um, but what other areas would you like us to, to talk a little bit about as far as this whole thing? Because it really, when you look at the list, uh, if you go to the web page, uh, Siena College, and you go to the creative arts uh, programs and curriculum, it really does list a whole um, 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 number of, of, of disciplines that one could um, get involved in. Now, music itself, um, you have musicology, you have music history, uh, you have composition. Right. Um, Students are very, very interested in, in the composition classes. Um, Paul Cogne is our composition teacher, and uh, he has been working with students here and also in Africa. Uh, he spent his sabbatical in Africa working with um, students there and did a number of concerts and a number of recordings. In fact, he was interviewed on German radio the other day because of this, uh, this connection that he brings. He brings American music into Africa. Oh, wonderful. And, it, and uh, mm -hmm. it's just been great. So his students also write. Uh, now, can they have their works? Uh, is, there, is there a forum for them to have the works performed? Yes. Or, uh, we have concerts, uh, two concerts a year. And uh, sometimes professional musicians will play their little compositions and uh, they sound really they're, they're intrigued by them sometimes um, they are they write compositions for more than just a piano and the musicians tell them wait a minute I really can't I can't do this on this instrument you don't understand that I can't do this it's really good when the professional musicians engage with the students work and they understand. We talked with a conductor yesterday in this in this program, and and he talked about a violin that apparently had somebody had taken like a, a hand blender and, and and sort of would oh. be able to put it into the strings and make this weird whizzy. <laughs> so I could imagine saying, "No, you can't do that to my violin." <laughs> well, and then the the whole reason I'm here, you'll remember, is because Camille Hoheb uh, wanted make, to make sure that the whole. Uh, Colony community would know about the jazz series that the Creative Arts Committee uh, sponsors every year. And we're having uh, one of those jazz concerts on the 1st of June 
and from 4.15 to 6 o'clock in the Maloney Great Room and the Sarazen Student Center at Siena College. And this time it's Patty O and, Patty o and the Hip Hooligan, Hooligan, Hooligans, excuse me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's a nice time, kind of a cabaret setting, and uh, we just have a good time. Next year, uh, next fall, or spring, depends how the schedule goes. They're trying. They're planning to have a jazz session for children. Wow! And I can't wait for that because I think that will be a really popular thing for the people in the area. Siena has many things for the people in the colony area to to uh, join in. So approachable. I know they. And I it's know. so easy to get to us. And uh, we just love having the local people come on campus. So now we're going to put the web page up, um, and so people can go to web page if they're web page oriented. Okay. And and they can find the. Um, should we be precise about getting to the to the uh, creative arts uh, discipline, or would they find uh, information about this? particular program and others and just by going into the general site first? Um, well, we'll make sure it's on the creative arts. Okay. How about that? Okay, good, good. <laughs> and you will have a, a flyer to put up on your this broadcast, so. Yes, and if somebody, um, uh, you know, in the listing I told you about, with, with we talked about, um, there are links, I believe, so if you were interested in, in arts um, management or whatever have oh, you, yes. you could click that and get a, a, get a greater... Um, um, for our tracks, that is the sort of fields you right, can study in right. uh, creative arts, you can click on those fields on our web page, and then it will tell you what courses you are suggested that you take. Well, who knows? There's, there might be somebody out in, in, our, in our audience, our viewing audience, That's that, right. that has been so stimulated today that they want to <laughs> explore that. And, and, uh, well, they should just come and see me. I'll be glad to show you on the department. <laughs> Open invitation, <huh? laughs> Open invitation, absolutely. <laughs> now, you mentioned a not yet. And that's a creative, a, 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 another facility. Uh, you told us where you are. So, is there something in the works? Is there a, is it a dream? Uh, you pray. Uh, is it a, you know, wh where are we? We have been we praying this? for uh, a creative arts center uh, because right now we're inhabiting the old gym, right, uh, which has very limited facilities. But has but been wonderfully modified for for the fact that it has a limited facilities. Because I know what I know what the stage limitations are. But the state, uh, yes, yes. But still, a, a whole building that has. It would all be this wonderful if we had that. <laughs> We're just waiting for benefactors. money. <laughs> <laughs> benefactors. Alums who love yes, the arts, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and we have so many things to offer now. Uh, really, we do. We have um, over a million dollar collection from the family, and we have no place to show yeah. it. It's a sad thing. And our productions are really too fine for the, the space that we have. The, the Persians should have been in a finer space, but it graced our space very well. Well, and, you, and you're, you're growing exponentially. I mean, I've seen since the time I've been in this area, I've seen things change there. And, and as you, you mentioned before, that um, the product is going to, I think, start attracting people. They're going to, they're going to perhaps sure. see a production. They're going to hear of somebody who has gone through this curriculum and has has m made it into a, in, into the world. Um, and all of a sudden, tension there, and and the why nots? Why can't we? I'm sure it competes yes, with yes. other uh, yes. aspects. Our uh, faculty is very fine, and very very committed to Siena and the Siena student. And we want to make our college as our, our rich artfully as we can. Our limits right now are our facilities, yeah. but we're hoping someday that will change. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks again for being on the show today. And Thank you for asking me. It was a treat. And, and um, please be available for a, a further discussion <laughs> on, on your specialties, would you? That would be fine. Yes. OK. Thanks again. Come to the jazz series. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll put that up. Thank you. And thank you for joining me on Getting to Know You. I hope you enjoyed today's program and will join us in the future. Until then, have a good one.